ITUD's study group question 6-1 addresses consumer protection within the context of the rapid evolution of technologies and the appearance in the market of ever more sophisticated technologies, equipment and new business models which benefit consumers. An annual deliverable was elaborated based on contributions received from membership and was augmented by a discussion held in a webinar on the 2nd of July 2020 as part of the ITUD study group Reflections on COVID-19 series. This paper brings an overview of challenges linked to nuisance and fraudulent calls and text messages and the strategies adopted by the different countries to tackle the problem. During our study, actually, we saw uh, quite a variety of regulatory approaches that were being followed globally. Um, I think, uh, for example, the United States uses um, caller authentication. Uh, countries like Italy, uh, France, Ecuador, India use specific telemarketing numbers. However, I think the most commonly used globally uh, uh, approach that we saw was the use of do not call lists or do not disturb lists. And another almost universal phenomena is uh, the use of uh, consumer engagement and consumer education to tackle the problem of unwanted calls and unwanted texts. Yeah, I think both uh, industry as well as consumers have a very important role to play when we come to tackling this problem. As far as industry is concerned, uh, they must cooperate with the regulator, you know, to respect consumer rights and to respect consumer preferences when it comes to unsolicited commercial communications. Um, the, we've seen some very good examples. For example, in Brazil, uh, the industry has adopted a voluntary code of conduct. And in India, the industry uh, collaborated with the regulator to implement blockchain solutions. Coming to consumers, they themselves have a very important role to play. They must actually keep themselves educated about the possibility of technology-enabled fraud and what the solutions are. They must be aware of their rights and they must alert regulators and telecom operators when they do face problems. Yeah, I think uh, what the pandemic actually did was to highlight the priority areas or issues that we were already uh, well aware of. For example, universalizing broadband access and ensuring quality broadband connectivity for everybody became absolutely an essential priority. And uh, in fact, internet connectivity became a lifeline for us during lockdowns and even otherwise. The other important area uh, that uh, we found as a priority during the pandemic was protecting the interests of particularly vulnerable sections of the population. For example, persons with disabilities, uh, children, the aged and the newly connected populations. So what we realized was that you need universal access, but you also need accessibility and consumer education and awareness. Digital technologies and services are pivotal to keep people connected, to allow businesses continuity, to learning, leisure, communication with friends and family. On the other hand, it's important to recognize the risks related to this contest, especially when we think about the most vulnerable end users. And in different countries and cultures all over the world, we've been following a worrying increase of malicious activities here included cybercrime, frauds, misinformation, for example. And in many cases, those problems are linked to nuisance and fraudulent calls and text messages.